Oh my, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. I was having a discussion with God and... Never mind that. Let me get the Book of Heroes. Now, where were we? Chapter 7 What? Hadishi yelled. You let those kids beat you. I'm sorry, sir. The guy replied trembling. But they were too strong for us. Too strong? Hadishi yelled. I'll show you strong. Hadishi extended his hand. The guy's eyes widened as he felt a sharp pain. Blood oozed from both sides of the guy's body. Hidishi removed his hand. The guy dropped to his knees, falling face first. Hidishi wiped the blood off his hands, asking his secretary to send in a clean-up crew. Just then, someone knocked on the door. Enter said Hidishi. It was his secretary, carrying a manila folder in her hand. She was tall, pretty, and didn't take anyone's bullshit. She wore professional business attire and kept her brown hair in a bun. Sir, here's the DNA results you wanted from Sergeant Greggs, his secretary replied. She made her way to Hidishi's desk and placed the manila folder on it. Then, she took a few steps back. Hidishi took the manila folder and carefully read the contents. A smile spread across his face. Also, your reinforcements have arrived, his secretary said. Excellent and in good time, Hidishi said. Send them in. Right away, sir, she said as she closed the door behind her. A few minutes later, Five guys dressed in black jumpsuits stood in front of Hidishi. A huge smile spread over his face as he looked at them. You guys must be the best of the best? He asked. Yes, sir! They shouted in unison. Excellent! Hidishi said, grinning evilly. Clattering sounds filled the back alley. From an outside perspective, one female was surrounded by five brawly men. But from the inside, it was a bad idea. This young girl had all the right curves in all the right places. Her mocha complexion made her look a little Hispanic. She had dark brown shoulder length hair and dark brown eyes. She wore blue jean shorts and a baby blue tank top with a yin-yang symbol on the front. She dashed forward and hit the nearest guy in the face with her knee. Blood squirted out from his broken nose as his body let gravity carry him to the ground. Pissed, another guy stepped up with a jab. She dodged and countered with a left hook. He clenched his stomach as he fell to his knees. Hmph, barely a warm-up, she said. The remaining three stared at her, each with a pulsating vein on their forehead. They teamed up and quickly charged towards her. She leaped forward, stepping on one of their faces. The extra boost flew her into the air. She could see over the rooftops, feeling she could grasp the moon in her hands. The young girl shouted. Suddenly, light began to swirl around her as she plummeted back to earth. 
the light crashed into the ground and quickly dispersed, revealing someone different. The young girl's transformation was like damn. Her body was covered in golden yellow fur, with white fur around her chest and abdomen. She stood in a tiptoe position and had a bushy yellow tail with a white tip. Her nose and mouth had extended out and her ears had moved to the top of her head. She had green eyes, a small black nose and razor sharp claws. Even her clothes made her furry body look fine. The three guys froze in terror. She grinned as she leaped into the air, crossing her arms over her chest. Needle storm! She shouted. Instantly, a shower of needle-shaped energy came crashing down onto the guys. They dodged, but couldn't keep up with the fast pace. The needles hit their marks. Tiny explosions filled the back alley as the guys flew in different directions. So, are you guys ready to talk? She asked, towering over their bruised bodies. Rosa and Tracy were at Macy's shopping for the spring dance. Although Rosa and Tracy were classmates, they never spoke to each other in gym class. It was after Tracy's first date with Mark that they got to know each other and quickly became friends. This blouse will go nicely with this skirt, said Rosa, picking out a red long sleeve blouse from the rack. What do you think of this outfit? Asked Tracy, holding khaki pants and a black tank top. Girl, it's cute, but you need something better. Rosa showed Tracy a black skirt with a blue off-the-shoulder blouse. I think Mark will like that better. Tracy replied with a smile. Silence filled the air. Then Tracy asked Rosa a question. Hey, why did you choose Andrew as your date? I told you before, the other guys in our school are jerks. Maybe, but is that the real reason? Rosa averted her eyes and didn't answer. The young girl arrived home to find her mother sitting on the couch in her robe. She looked at her mother and quickly averted her eyes. She could feel a lecture rising from her mother's throat. Where were you? It's already 11 and way past your curfew. Mom, I... Don't mom me, Shanta Shepard. I know you've been going out and fighting those thugs. Just because you got some strange powers doesn't make you a superhero. Mrs. Shepard looked like an older version of Shanta. She was the same height as Shanta and had the same mocha complexion. Even the dark brown eyes, semi-wide nose, and shoulder-length black hair were the same. You expect me to hide my powers and never use them? Shanta asked angrily. You were there when Madame Rene gave them to me. Mrs. Shepard began to recall the event in her mind. It was a cold winter night ten years ago. The snow had fallen the night before, and the city sweepers hadn't made their rounds yet. On their way towards the grocery store, Mrs. Shepard noticed a figure slowly approaching them. It was Madame Rene, but she was walking instead of sitting in her chair. Shanta, who was holding Mrs. Shepard's hand, couldn't stop staring at Madame Rene. It almost felt like meeting a celebrity for the first time. Madame Rene stopped and stared back at Shanta through her dark shades. Mrs. Shepard stepped in front of Shanta, glaring at Madame Rene. I mean you no harm, Mrs. Shepard, Madame Rene said with a smile. How do you know me? Mrs. Shepard asked with an astonished look. Your child is one of the chosen few to save this world. Madame Renee answered. I know it is hard to believe, but it is the truth. A dark force is slowly approaching. There is no time to waste. Quickly, Madame Renee pulled out a deck of cards from her pocket. She shuffled the deck. She slowly pulled out a card from the deck and revealed it to Mrs. Shepard. 
It was a picture of a fox. Confused, Mrs. Shepard took the card from Madame Renee's hand. Please give the card to Shanta. Madame Renee insisted. Mrs. Shepard did what she was told. Shanta held the card in her tiny hands. Instantly a swirl of light surrounded her. Mrs. Oh. Shepard stepped back, shielding her eyes from the intense light. Cries of pain rang in Mrs. Shepard's ears as she heard Shanta scream. Try as she might, she couldn't progress further to save her daughter. The light faded. Mrs. Shepard ran towards Shanta, who was lying on the ground face first. She held her in her arms. Shanta's eyes fluttered and opened. Mrs. Shepard embraced Shanta tightly. Even after all that, I still can't get over the tattoo. Mrs. Shepard thought as she slowly came back to reality. Just be careful, okay? You know I hate worrying. I know, Mom. Replied Shanta and kissed her mother on the forehead. Three days came and went. Soon the school dance was only five hours away. Andrew waited anxiously for the bell to ring for the two o'clock dismissal in his algebra class. He looked at Rosa for a moment and then back at the clock. The bell rang loudly as everyone scrambled out of the seats. As Andrew placed some of his books into his locker, he couldn't help but think about Rosa. She is pretty, but will she enjoy dancing with me? Andrew knew he acted differently around her, like he didn't want to be bothered by her. But Andrew just didn't know how to tell her how he felt. Yo, Drew, you ready for tonight? A voice called out to him. It was Josh with a huge grin. They bumped fists. Kinda. Andrew replied shyly. Aren't you going with Rosa? Yeah. Dude, you are so crushing on her, right? Shut up, man! Dude, it's cool. I think Rosa's a sexy chick, too. You should totally hit that. Josh, stop saying childish things. Another voice called out. It was Emily. Andrew, I think it's cute that you like Rosa. You should tell her how you feel. But I... Andrew started. Just let it come out natural. Emily replied with a smile. I'm sure she likes you too. I hope so. Andrew said with a sigh. <laughs> Beast of the Bronx. Andrew got home, placing his backpack down on the bed. He quickly took a shower. Andrew wiped away the steam from the mirror, staring into it. He really wondered if Rosa really saw him more than a friend. He sighed as he put on a yellow collared shirt with blue horizontal stripes, blue jeans, and his new Tims he bought last week. Andrew walked to the kitchen to get something to eat. The smell enticed his nose as Lily had already made dinner for everyone. Thanks, Andrew said with a smile. It looks great. Lily smiled back. Eat up before it gets cold. William came into the dining room, wearing a blue colored shirt with gray horizontal stripes, blue jeans, and blue and yellow Reeboks. He even combed his raggedy brown hair. You look tight, Will. Andrew said before he ate another bite of his food. You too, Drew. William replied. He moved closer towards Andrew. So I heard you're taking Rosa to the dance. You are? That's great, Drew! Replied Mike, walking into the kitchen. You and Rosa make a cute couple. Andrew stopped chewing and ignored Mike's last comment. With a mouthful of food, he said to William, Yeah, so? Oh, nothing. William answered, I just wanted to know if it was true. Oh yeah, you might want to hurry up since you're picking her up, right? Andrew looked at his watch. He had ten minutes before he picked Rosa up. Andrew rushed to the bathroom and quickly brushed his teeth. He put some cologne on his neck. He took one last look at himself in the mirror. With enough satisfaction, Andrew jogged towards the door. He kissed Lily goodbye and ran outside the door.
Andrew arrived at the Sanchez apartment with two minutes to spare. The Sanchez's 10th floor apartment is like the Roberts apartment, small yet comfortable. Andrew didn't know if they redecorated since the last time he came over, which was around age 10. He mostly remembered the living room. It was the same size as his, but it had beige carpeting. Miss Sanchez always kept her rosaries in her oak cabinet, which was on the left side of the room. The TV and couch were on the right side and were tilted a little. The bathrooms were always clean, while Rosa's room was always dirty. Andrew rang the doorbell and waited for someone to open the door. A few seconds later, Ms. Sanchez opened the door. Ms. Sanchez looked like an older version of Rosa. She was the same height as Lily and was a little plump. She had brown, shoulder-length hair and hazel eyes. Rosa will be out shortly she said sweetly. Please come in, Andrew. Andrew stepped inside. It was the way he remembered it. Minutes later, Rosa walked out of her room. Aren't we sexy tonight? Miss Sanchez said in a slick tone. Man, Rosa looked hot. Rosa wore a red long-sleeved blouse showing her belly button and some cleavage, a blue jean skirt that made her butt look bigger, and her blue shoes. She even wore red lipstick to match her outfit. Not only that, but her hair was up in a bun, which made her hazel eyes glow a little more. You look hot, Andrew said bashfully. You don't think it's too much? She asked, not listening to him. Oh no, he answered with a flushed face. It's just perfect. As they walked to the gym entrance, Rosa held Andrew's arm. His face turned bright red. Once inside, they stood there in awe looking at the decorated gym. It was awesome. Streamers and balloons hung everywhere. Over in the left corner was the DJ playing the hottest hits. In the middle of the gym was a huge disco globe that glistened all over the place. Even the colored spotlights added a nice touch to the decor. The gym was crowded with people, even though most of them were sitting down talking. When the music got crunk, everyone got up and danced. Andrew quickly found Mark and Tracy on the dance floor. Boy, were they having fun. They were bumping and grinding to all the hits. He even saw Josh trying to impress this cute girl with his moves. To his surprise, Josh managed to get the girl to dance with him longer. Emily, who wore a pink halter dress with a white cardigan, waved to Andrew and Rosa. They waved back and stared at the dance floor. Andrew looked at Rosa, asking her if she wanted to dance. She nodded, leading Andrew to the dance floor. As Andrew danced with Rosa, he realized he wasn't half bad. You're getting better, she said to Andrew as they continued to dance. Thanks, Andrew said, trying not to lose his concentration. As the night went on, Rosa and Andrew danced to almost every song the DJ dished out. Even William joined in, dancing with a girl in his class. The place was jumping. But when the DJ said it was time to find that special someone for a slow song, Andrew immediately freaked. I, uh, I, uh, he managed to say. What's wrong? Rosa teased. You're not afraid to dance a slow song with me? Me? No. Andrew answered, trying to act cool. Good, now I want you to lead. She said, smiling. Andrew gulped. Sure. He placed his hands on her hips. She wrapped her arms around his neck. Andrew began to feel flush. Rosa rested her head on his shoulder, turning Andrew's face into a tomato. As the music played, Andrew led the way. Suddenly he felt calm. Andrew wrapped his arms around Rosa's hips and let his body get closer to hers. Her face grew hot. Andrew wasn't sure where he got the courage to do this, 
but he liked every minute of it. Meanwhile, in the black sedan, the five guys in jumpsuits waited for the right moment to strike. One of the guys looked at his watch. He nodded. Let's make this fast. Beast of the Bronx. As the song continued to play, Rosa and Andrew looked into each other's eyes. Andrew smiled. What? She asked in a sweet voice. You're so beautiful. Andrew answered. And I can't take my eyes off of you. Rosa's face turned red. Why am I so nervous? Is Tracy right? Do I really? She gave Andrew a warm smile. Andrew smiled back. Soon, they both slowly leaned their heads forward and closed their eyes. Andrew couldn't believe he was going to kiss Rosa. BAM! The gym doors flew open, revealing the five guys in jumpsuits. Rosa held Andrew tightly as the guys walked closer to the dance floor. From the looks of these guys, they were elite. Mark and Andrew knew Hidishi sent these goons to stop them. The only problem was how were they going to transform without everyone knowing. We're looking for two high schoolers who can metamorph, the leader said. Have you seen them? Nobody answered. Nobody had a clue what they were talking about. Tracy and William both glanced at Mark and Andrew. I'll ask again nicely, he said angrily. Where are they? Dude, what the hell are you talking about? Josh asked, looking confused. And what's metamorph? Is that some code word for selling drugs? The leader sighed. Look, have you seen them or not? Josh shook his head. The leader looked around. Everyone was shaking their heads. I guess they haven't seen them? The leader said, shrugging his shoulders. He looked at his team. We can't have any witnesses. Torch the place, flame boy. A short, skinny kid with black spiky hair, a long face and dark brown eyes stepped forward from the group and instantly lit his hands on fire. He raised his fiery hands towards the ceiling and began firing flames. Everyone ran for safety, screaming at the top of their lungs. Soon, Mark, Tracy, Rosa, William and Andrew were the only ones left. That was easy, said Flame Boy, as he extinguished the flames surrounding his hands. William, take the girls to safety, Andrew said, still focusing his eyes on the group. On it, replied William. Are you crazy? Rosa exclaimed, still holding on to Andrew. You can't fight them. Don't worry about me, said Andrew, looking back at her. I can take care of myself. You better go too replied Mark, looking at Tracy. Both William and Tracy quickly grabbed Rosa. Come on, Rosa. Let the boys handle it, said Tracy. I know they can take care of themselves. Rosa looked at William. William nodded, agreeing with Tracy. Once William, Rosa, and Tracy left the gym, Mark and Andrew were ready for business. Who the hell are you guys? Andrew asked. We are the Metamorphic Five. The leader said. Well, at least their name is original, said Mark sarcastically. I'm Big C, the leader said. He introduced the rest of the gang by size. Next to me is Rampage Gyro Sparks, and you already met Flame Boy, the youngest of the group. Big C was as tall as Shaq and was very muscular. He had brown hair with bangs that hung over his ice blue eyes. His long face made him look older even though he was a teenager. Rampage was the heaviest one in the group. Even though he was made of muscle instead of fat, he still looked like a giant ball of blubber. He was bald, had a round face and brown eyes. Gyro was a weird guy. He had long blue hair that covered his brown eyes and smiled in a psychotic way. Sparks was the quiet one. He had white spiky hair and a small face. His eye color was a mystery since he had very narrow eyes. 
The name's Mark, and this is Drew, replied Mark, a.k.a. Ponza, and Okami, Andrew filled in, Andrew and Mark quickly metamorphed. With their claws ready, they waited for the metamorphic five to strike. To their surprise, the metamorphic five just stared at them. Haven't you seen a were-panther and a werewolf before? Asked Mark. We were expecting a challenge, answered Big C. You guys are weaklings compared to us. Say what? Andrew exclaimed. You want to start something? Mark asked, raising his claws. We can take you on. I don't think so, replied Big C. You wouldn't last five minutes with us. We'll see, Andrew said, sounding confident. Sparks, I want you to fight these punks, Big C ordered. Sparks stepped forward. Electricity surged around him. He looked at Mark and Andrew and grinned evilly. Give up or face my wrath, he said. We'll wait for you outside, replied Big C as he and the others left the gym. Come on, Mark, let's show him what we can do, Andrew said dashing towards Sparks. William, Rosa, and Tracy were hiding in the home economics classroom. They had the door locked and kept their heads down. What the hell just happened? Rosa whispered. And why are you guys so confident in Drew and Mark? Well, uh... William began. I just am. Tracy replied. You should always have faith in your man. <gasps> Rosa's face became flushed. Drew's not my man. You sure? William asked. From what I saw, you two were about to. Rosa quickly covered William's mouth as she glared at him. William began to panic. Say anything else about it, and I'll kill you myself. Rosa said in an almost demonic voice. William nodded frantically, with beads of sweat running down his face. Andrew threw the first punch. Sparks vanished. They couldn't find him. Mark turned around and saw Sparks leaning against a wall. You're doing it all wrong, he said grinning. Let me show you how it's done. He opened his narrow eyes, revealing his colorless eyes. Instantly, Sparks was behind Mark and Andrew. BAM! They both felt a hard blow to their backs. Their bodies became weightless, gliding across the gym floor. They both somersaulted to regain balance. They dashed forward. Mark began the assault with several punches. Andrew came in with some kicks. To their surprise, Sparks blocked all their attacks. BAM! SMACK! Mark and Andrew skidded on the ground and crashed into a wall. They both got up slowly, gnashing their teeth. This time, Andrew led the attack. He tried slashing Sparks, but Andrew couldn't touch him. Sparks' movements were so fast, it was like Andrew was fighting light. Smack! Sparks kicked Andrew in his chin, making him fly into the air. With no time to react, Andrew felt a hard blow to his back. He came crashing down. The gym floor cracked and a cloud of debris rose into the air. The debris settled with Andrew face first on the floor. Shadow Fang! Mark shouted as the worm-like shadow rose into the air. Sparks stretched out his hand and blocked the attack, splitting the shadow into five smaller shadows. The ceiling turned into Swiss cheese. With the same hand, Sparks fired a jolt of electricity at Mark. Mark cried in pain as his body began to feel numb. Soon his body couldn't take much more. Mark fell to his knees and de-transformed, falling face first onto the gym floor. Sparks laughed hysterically. His laughter woke Andrew. With blurry eyes, Andrew could make out Mark's body. He clenched his fists tightly and gnashed his teeth. Anger overwhelmed him. He stood up, placing all his weight onto his left leg. You bastard! Andrew shouted. Try this on for size. Striking claw! Andrew jumped to the air with his glowing claw, outstretched towards him. 
Sparks immediately reacted with a jolt of electricity. The jolt hit Andrew, but his glowing claw kept pressing on. It was like his body wanted him to go through Sparks' attack, despite the pain he was in. All Andrew knew, he wanted to get Sparks for hurting Mark. What? Sparks thought. I can't lose to a runt like him. Sparks added more electricity to his attack. It pushed Andrew farther away from him. With Sparks' added power, Andrew's body couldn't keep up with this struggle. Andrew cried in pain as Sparks' attack surged through his body. Andrew crashed into the ground hard, cracking the gym floor. He slowly got up trying to keep his eyes focused on Sparks. Electricity discharged from his numb body as his body grew tired. Andrew G transformed, collapsing to the ground face first. Sparks walked over to Andrew and towered over him. What does the boss see in you? Sparks asked the unconscious Andrew while making a face. Sparks left the gym and headed for the main entrance. As he passed the home economics classroom, Sparks heard a loud gasp. He peered inside and saw a foot sticking out from behind one of the stations. What do we have here? Sparks asked himself. He raised his hand and blasted the door down. William, Rosa and Tracy shrieked in terror as Sparks entered the classroom. They quickly split up, trying to reach the classroom door. Sparks looked at them evilly, knocking the girls out with a small jolt of electricity. William, on the other hand, made it out of the classroom. Sparks grabbed them by their waist and began hovering towards the main entrance. Back on the gym floor, Andrew tried to get up. Soon, William met up with Andrew. He was out of breath. True. That guy took Rosa and Tracy away. William cried out in between breaths. Andrew was stunned. Despite all their efforts, they couldn't save the ones they loved. Out of anger, Andrew slammed his fist into the ground. Oh my. Our heroes lost and their loved ones are kidnapped. What will Andrew and Mark do now? Find out next time on Beast of the Bronx. Yeah. Intuition, just wanna follow intuition All my senses tell me I know what you've been thinking I know, I know. I've been feeling, what if we got up, left this party Cause I can see you're probably gonna be scrolling feeds all night long Your friend